Welcome to Accounting Life with Jotham Tai. Today's episode is Big Four Learnings. Our guest today is Eric Xiao, CAO at Brex. On this episode, we talk about the types of experiences you should seek out in your career, stories of accelerated learning in the real world, and how a life in accounting can positively impact your life outside of work. Now, our host, Jotham Tai. Eric, thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome to the Accounting Life podcast. Great. Uh, thanks for inviting me. I'm honored. Well, I am really, really looking forward to having this conversation uh, because I am someone who also came from the big four, but I only spent one year there. I learned so much, uh, but you know, given your time and, and the tenure that you had uh, at the big four, you know, really wanted to dig into you know, all the amazing learnings, all the good stories uh, that you experienced uh, during your time there. So before we dive in, Eric, uh, maybe just give a quick background on uh, your, your professional background, obviously in the big four as well, uh, and where you are now. Sure. Um, so I'm the chief accounting officer at Brex. Um, prior to joining the company four years ago, I spent a little over a decade at PricewaterhouseCoopers. Um, at Pricewaterhouse, I spent seven years in New York, uh, almost four years in San Francisco. And I really focused on mostly large multinational financial institutions. Um, and I'll get into that a little bit later, I'm sure, with some of the Q&A and, and other aspects um, you and your listeners may be curious about. Um, so spent a long time auditing a lot of public companies, financial institutions. I joined Brex about four years ago. And at that time, we were a 70-person organization, small downtown office in San Francisco. Today, we're about 1,300 employees globally. So it's really been just like a crazy ride since then really took a lot of the experiences that I learned at PUC from all those companies and was able to apply it here in building out the accounting function at Brex from the ground up. Um, and especially with being a fintech company and with me having a financial services background, my team and I actually get pulled in a lot to advise on a, on a large variety of product development, accounting software features that we're launching to our customers, certainly funds flow on the more complex financial services that we're providing, like global credit card, um, payment support. Um, and the product team here, they're all, they're like really curious about what overall best practices in accounting are, because we're trying to also build that for our customers on top of what we're building um, in our solutions. Um, yeah. Well, and so uh, I think the finance and accounting influence in the Brex product. And I know we're going to talk about, you know, Bigborn PwC in a bit, but I just want to quickly comment as a Brex customer, it is intuitive. Uh, it And, and the, yeah, the um, model that you have and the rewards and, and there's so many great things that we love about Brex. And I'm not just plugging Brex for the sake of plugging Brex. It, it is very easy to use. And as someone who has to run a business uh, in my role uh, at a very broad level, I, just the simplicity and the power of Brex has been, uh, um, you know, really great for our team. So I wanted uh, to drop that in too. But yeah, let's get into your PwC experience. A lot of our listeners are and we're big four and the controllership now. And I thought this episode would be nice, Eric, because you know a lot of times life happens so fast and we forget about you know all the amazing things that happened in our past. And and so you know let's call this an episode where we pay homage to our our roots and, um, and also, you know, just for flashback sake, you know, talk about the good times and, you know, of course, everyone knows that being at a big four, you know, also was, um, was fast paced and busy, uh, just to use some, some words there, but I want to focus on, you know, the, the learnings and I want to start with Eric. Um, you know, obviously you learn how to audit, uh, in assurance at PwC. Uh, but you know, to me, one of the biggest learnings I took away from my short time in the big four uh, was all the accounting guidance that I got exposure to. That's where I first, uh, you know, covered 97.2 and SAP 101-104. Uh, so what are some of you know, the accounting guidances? What are your favorite ones or you know, what are the biggest areas that, that you took away from your experience there? Yeah, sure thing. Let, let me start it off. I'm going to answer the question kind of two ways, but I'm going to start off by also saying that there's really no place like a big four firm or or any kind of like large accounting firm to get hands-on experience with really complex and interesting transactions, working on like acquisitions of companies, working on private debt deals, um, different structures, et cetera. And like for me, 
you know, and, and maybe this is just who I am, but I was just always naturally drawn to those kinds of accounting areas on all my engagements. Um, a very senior partner told me very early on in my career, um, he said, if you want to get the most out of your experience here, when you see a problem, you got to run towards it. Don't be one of those people that backs away. Running towards a problem will give you the most experience and the most learnings you can get at the firm. And I think that that was one great thing about PDPC. Also, a lot of the senior leadership, they had no, the wool wasn't pulled over their eyes. Like they knew people would probably end up moving on to industry, um, but, but they wanted their people to have a really good experience and hopefully become clients one day. Um, but in any case, like I was naturally drawn to, you know, things that were common in financial services, things like loan loss allowances, which get impacted by specific circumstances related to a bank or a company's loan portfolio, but also macroeconomic conditions, et cetera. Like that's really prominent now, given the new rules with uh, Cecil. Um, so credit, credit expected, um, current and current losses. Uh, sorry, current and expected credit losses. Um, I was also really interested in securities valuation. Um, that comes from my time working on some large multinational banks. They had a, you know, they were large um, broker dealers also. So they usually had a large trading portfolio and some really interesting swaps and derivatives um, and also structured debt. So looking at different ways to lend, how to protect different folks that have interests in different areas of the waterfall on a debt facility or, 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 or a loan, et cetera. Uh, those were the things that really drew me in. Um, and the second part on how Matt going to answer this question is, I think beyond going into those transactions and getting the know-how specific to these areas and how to how to audit them or how to think about the accounting, I think one of the great learnings I had from PwC is how to also do the research, how to figure out the accounting if it's a transaction that I've never had experience with before and how to get to a reasonable conclusion. I think we all know the, the saying, right? give a man a fish and you feed him for a day, teach a man a fish and you feed him for a lifetime. And I think at PwC, what I did was I learned how to fish. I learned how to fish and it wasn't just easy ones either. It was like really difficult fish that sometimes had a surprise for you when you put them on the hook, you know? And so uh, those are kind of what I took away from my time there. You learned how to fish and also you were encouraged by the leaders at PwC to tackle you know, bigger challenges. So I, I'm sure that I just prepped you and set you up for, for all the success that you, you've had thereafter. And yeah, that's a really good, good take. And I think, you know, all in all, when I think about what you described and also my time, my short time at KPMG, you had the option of choosing from different industries and you went into some, you know, very technical financial services uh, expressions and terms that I won't even pretend to, to know because that wasn't where um, you know, my interest was in terms of industry, but I think for anyone going into a big four and also us reflecting back now at our times there, it is so cool to have that optionality, right? Like I want to get into software. I want to get into financial services and, you know, mid tier terms obviously don't, you know, aren't able to offer that level of variety in the same way that big fours can. So yeah, it's really interesting. I, and you know, there's that kind of diversity angle, but then there's also just like the learning, you know, how to fish part, which is a good segue into to my next question here. Yeah, you know, to me, that was also the time where I pretty much just grew up as a professional. I mean, before then I was a college kid just trying to figure everything out. Uh, I did spend some time in a mid-tier firm, but when I got to the big four because of the variety of the environments I was in, I learned everything from like how how to operate a fax machine <laughs> to like how to conduct and run meetings. So, you know, kind of along those lines, whether, you know, it's corporate acumen or whatever you want to call it, like what were some of the learnings um, early on in your career uh, that you think, you know, PwC helped uh, help foster for you? I mean, you touch on a lot of things. I think one of the interesting things about just how the accounting industry um, works is the big four, I think, play a large part in it. And I think a lot of the things that associates when they join PwC or or any of the big four, you know, or any other really large accounting firm get is that corporate experience. So it's everywhere from, yeah, you learn how to use a fax machine. You're, 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 you're learning like all these like operational things related to like, you're learning how to write an email appropriately. You're, right. you're like, and you're, you're learning how to write the email in the right tone 
or like at least you're going to guess how the other person is going to read it. You're able to lurk. You're able to put yourself in the other person's shoes so that when you write it, it like the message gets across and it gets across in a professional way. And hopefully it's succinct and concise and, and et cetera too. So, so those are a lot of the skills that I learned at PBC as well. Um, there's not really like an email writing class when I was in college, right? That's something you learn on the job. I think another thing I learned, and this is really interesting um, for my time now, now that I, I'm in industry, I, w I was thrown into managing engagement economics and budget very, very early on in my career. I think in my third year at the firm, I was on a, a smaller client um, and I was the senior and I had a couple of staff. The manager wasn't staffed all year round, so it was really only me. Um, and and therefore, I was doing all the, monitor all the monitoring. I was looking at hours book, budget versus actual, ensuring that deliverables were being met on time on a quarterly basis for interim and for year end, working directly with the partner. Um, and that kind of project management experience, it's really served me well, not beyond my third year at PwC going on, because like I worked there for a decade, but also at uh, at Brex. So at Brex, it's, it's very similar. I have these deliverables for every month end. I have year end audit. I have projects that occur ad hoc uh, throughout the year. And I really focus on thinking about what the most efficient way is to get a conclusion out there or answers out there to my stakeholders, working with my stakeholders to get feedback, right? Cause that's something I used to do at the firm as well. Like I would talk to the controller there and ask about like, Hey, how's, how are we doing here? Is there anything that you would change from here, et cetera. And trying to figure out how to implement that in our daily processes. And then ultimately also managing upwards. Like I think you do report to somebody, at the firm, I, I I still do that now. I have to report to the executive team on a variety of transactions and, and make sure that they're in the loop on the more important aspects of that. Um, and, and I think that's yeah. one big takeaway. Yeah. You're spot on about just you know, learning things that you don't learn in school. You can't possibly learn in school, whether it's writing the email or managing projects, as you mentioned. And I think what's, again, unique about the big four is that ready or not, you got to go do it. Right? Yeah. So, there's no like, is he or she ready yet? It's, hey, um, you might be just 23 or 24 years old, but you're running a half million dollar audit project. And crazy actually for me to think about that now, um, especially as now someone looking into engaging a versus myself. Possibly yeah, whoever I mean, is running my project in the future will be kind of learning on the go and it's it's interesting to think about it from that lens sorry i just had that that random no, i mean i mean like in the in the services industry especially and, and this goes for consulting and a lot of other places too you usually get like a fixed fee engagement um as a younger person on the engagement team you, you may not have been part of the initial rfp or the or the group coming up with the pricing but you're in charge of it right and you're trying to manage the profitability of the engagement and those kinds of skills and project management and all the constraints you're working under, right? You work under constraints. Everyone works under constraints. Learning how to work under those constraints um, is really helpful because that's just because life is like that. You know, you're just not going to get everything you want all the time. And so doing more with less, I think, and being creative about processes, like getting comfort over an audit area in some new way. I think those are things that I was able to develop because of the circumstances that I had with, with these engagements. And they've served me well going forward in my career. Yeah. Gosh, I, Eric, I had no idea that I, as we would be talking about this, that I would have so many new realizations <laughs> about my own my own time there. Um, because it, it really is, you know, again, not, not only learning on the fly about like how to do something, but how to apply creativity to your, just your, your latest point there. And it's, it's, you got to do it. It's on the job learning. Uh, it's accelerated learning. I think a lot of times when I think about my time at the before, I think about just the counting guidance and audit learnings and so on, but it's so much more than that. Like the accelerated part of, of what we learned. So I'm going to add one more take to that, like going through the guidance and we, we touched about that upon that in the first question. One of the other huge things, and this is not specific to any audit area. But when you're going into an audit area or when you're looking at a transaction, what I learned over my time at the firm is that 
across many different clients, they would treat the same transaction a little bit differently. Hmm. It wasn't the same answer. It wasn't the same presentation and disclosure in the face of the financials or in the footnotes or even their process of running it. And what I learned there is that there are many different ways to solve a problem and that there are goalposts or a range of reasonableness on how you can, on the conclusion, right? And the fact that like in accounting, it's not always black and white, right? You, you end up fostering creativeness because of that. And you can gear an answer towards what's best for the investor, right? The investor to actually get a good, a good, a good idea of how a business is performing and what the truth is. Because the truth, you know, it, it's not always the same for everybody and, and it's different industry to industry, company to company, there's different circumstances. And um, I think that's really important too. Yeah, so it's, and I'll add to that, it's adopting the position and learning how to do it in different types of scenarios because it's not a one size fits all approach. But yeah. then there's also the influencing, right? And I know in insurance and in audit, we kind of have like an authoritative voice. Uh, but I do remember in my time having to sell our, our position as the audit team to to VPs of sales again when I was very strong, young professionals still and learning how to uh, you know, influence and, and um, describe a position in an effective way. Mm-hmm. You know, it was something I had to learn on the fly. I mean, geez, I remember being a nervous wreck, uh, Eric. I was trying to uh, refute a position that management had taken about a you know, revenue stance and um, partner was actually supposed to join me in that meeting, but I got, I got up and I oh, explained. classic story. Yeah, I'm let's sure you got stories like that. That's the how the associate does. <laughs> yeah, thankfully I was a senior uh, auditor at that time, but still I was nowhere ready to do it. But again, I appreciated that experience because it kind of pushed me to, to figure it out. And of course, you know, I use that as a stepping stone to learn how to how to do more of that later. Um, but you, you have to have stories like that too. I'd love to hear if you, if you can think of any. You know, just like very accelerated learning, like ready or not, Eric, you're doing it. So I was on, um, I, had, I had a very interesting list of audit clients. And then um, one year I got pulled onto the Uber audit when I was in San Francisco. And so Uber had this car leasing business uh, back then. Um, and... The way the way the firm works is just divided between like you know they have a, a tech practice they have a banking practice financial like asset management etc they 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 break it out by all these different industries right but what happens is for larger clients when they start crossing into other industries and the core industry that's serving the client doesn't have the necessary experience they bring in another team so when they did this leasing. They were like finance leases for cars. They brought in me and, and there was another partner that I had. Um, and I've never done car leasing before. And I had done it before. And so I um, was looking at their stock lease agreement that they were leasing all these cars to different drivers for. And then there was a big presentation that I had to give to the the Uber executive like audit team. So like the whole, the, the engagement partner for all of Uber the concurring partner, there might have even been the senior relationship partner who was like the head of the San Jose office or something on, on the meeting. And like, you know, I was, uh, we, were, we were going to make a presentation on like how we should think about presentation, like looking at uh, these transactions on the face of the balance sheet and the income statement, et cetera. And partner, no should, you know, didn't like I had to make the presentation basically all by myself. And then I went out there and and thank goodness, like, you know, you were, you were a C, an audit senior. I was already like seven years into the firm. So I did have some experience with, with some presentation, but I didn't, I wasn't really that comfortable with, with public speaking that, that much yet. Um, and so I just, I just had to do it. I just had to go in and do my best. And thankfully it wasn't a disaster and I got my points across. Um, but yeah, you know. Uh, yeah, it's so classic, like you said. Uh, <laughs> but again, you know, in hindsight, I don't, rec- I don't, I'm not mad about it because it, it got to, it got me to where I am, and it helped me develop, you know, my own skills and in, in a pretty accelerated way, as we talked about. And yeah, I guess segue into you know, the, the last uh, questions here. You know, obviously, we talk about 
you know, how we've developed our own professional skills through our, our experiences at the big four, but how does that expand beyond you know, to, to life? So I'll just give an example. Like I think because of my time there, I am very regimented in the way I approach life. And I don't know if it's an accountant thing or a big four thing. I want to say it, it was because of public accounting generally, not just the big four, that I'm punctual is that I'm very um, rational about like why I'm doing something. Everything sounds like a work paper. I am doing this because and there's a conclusion after. Um, so, you know, that's what I, I think those are the characteristics that I, I, kind of adopted because of my time there. I'd love to hear about, you know, some of the life learnings beyond work that, you know, that stands out for you. Um, I'm going to spin this. I, I, I do have life learnings from here. I want to spin this a little bit into my personal life. Um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm Chinese. I'm an ABC American born Chinese and my parents, uh, came over, uh, in the eighties, uh, from, from China. Um, and I don't know, there's a certain way in which like my family interacts with each other. And whenever we make a decision, like, I don't know, my mom will bring me in when like we're hosting an event or something like that. And she just brings in like all these considerations. Oh, your aunt from San Francisco doesn't really like this dish. So, but this is what we always cook. Do you think she'll be okay with it? Or this, my, my, my brother and my, you know, cousin have beef right now. So like, should we... Should we figure out what to do here? I talk with someone, and I and I and and I, I'm bringing this up because I I hated that. I thought she would always bring me in on these conversations, even when I was a little kid. And I'd be like, I have no idea. I'm like, I'm just a kid. But then at PVC, right? There's a, there's a big thing about um, we had the saying, "Don't go it alone." Okay, mm -hmm. don't go it alone, and it's because when you get into any situation where there are decision points that need to be made, oftentimes you shouldn't make those decisions in a vacuum because they don't only affect you and your workload, but likely someone else on your team in another audit area, you know, getting the advice of someone who has that context across all those different people and all those different stakeholders that may be involved in your decision is really important. One, I think you protect yourself by getting the advice of a lot of different people and you get to the best conclusion because you're putting all your brains together. And then two, you're also going to protect the firm because like those other people then have more perspective from the situation that you're going through and it may impact them and like how they're doing with their clients or if it's on the same engagement, something to do with their area, et cetera. And so this, this concept of cross-functional work and collaboration, be working together as a team, I think, was really uh, something that was impressed upon me in my time at the firm. And, and I saw in many ways how it was very helpful for everyone involved. And I try to apply that everywhere. Like now I'm the one asking my mom, hey, like, you know, maybe we shouldn't do this because this person will be mad, blah, blah, blah. Or I, and I do it with my wife a lot too. And um, sometimes I'm annoying, but you know, it's just how it, I am, I guess. Yeah, well, the diversity of perspectives and taking you know, the the best from from everyone and coming to a better quality decision are are all important traits to have not only in in work but but life in general. Well, Eric, this has been a fun conversation. I sure hope we can find some other big four reminiscing type topics to talk about in the future because I had a great time. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for stopping by. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you want more information, please check us out at gapify.com and we'll see you next time. Bye everyone.